Welcome to the Secrets of College Planning. I'm your host, Anthony Uva, and today we're going to get some insight into design and clothing at the college level. My guest today is Jeffrey Appleson. He is the designer and CEO of Jeffrey Scott, and welcome to the show. Thank you, my friend. Happy yeah. to be here. Thank you. Yeah. Uh, so usually I start my guests uh, where they went to college. So where'd you go to school? TCNJ. Oh. Locally, fantastic. yes. Fantastic. But I didn't start there. Oh. Uh, yeah, yeah. Well, let's let's go back in time before we you dive tell into me that story. Exactly, yeah. Go go right into it. Um, so let's go into high school. When did you start thinking about going to college? Was it freshman year, high school, senior year? When when did it all begin for you? Surprisingly, it was never a thought. Really? Yeah. I mean, I knew it was an avenue, the route to take, and that's that's the way to go, and that's what your parents want. But I wasn't focused on school. I was focused more on my friends and having a good time. And, I wasn't the best student, yeah. C's, D's, you know, yeah. um, but I made it through. However, during high school, we sat down with guidance counselors several times and, and everybody agreed that college wasn't for me. So I didn't go to college right away. And for two years, I think it was two years, my last two years in high school, I did vocational school. Wow. And yeah. And so the first half of the day was high school classes. The second half, I went over to Mercer County Votech and did electrical work. Or learn the electrical industry. Wow. Yeah, yeah. I had my uncle was in the industry and, and I think one other family member. But but it was it seemed like a good route and I like to get my hands dirty and build things and do all that. So graduated high school, did electrical work for a couple of years. Wow. Residential, commercial. So you didn't go to TCNJ right out of no, high school? No. So you did that for a little bit. Mm -hmm. And then what prompted you to actually go to TCNJ? So after a couple of years doing electrical work, I, I something clicked, and I'm like, you know what? This isn't the world I want to be in. I was working with a lot of a lot of guys that just didn't have their lives together. Yeah, that's we can leave it at that. I'm like, I don't want to be surrounded by this. So I decided to go to college, and I was 21 at that point. I didn't start until I was 21. I started at Mercer, Mercer County yeah. um, Community. Did a couple of years there. Decided, and I worked my, my butt off. Like I, I was finally motivated and ready to wow. do something and prove everybody wrong that, that didn't feel I could, you know? Yeah. And that was what drove me. Transferred after two years to TCNJ. I applied, initially applied to the business school. Right. Got rejected. Wow. And my ex actually convinced me to write a letter of reconsideration. She basically wrote it for me. Nice. <laughs> Little secret. But um, wrote that to the dean. And they they wrote back and accepted me into the communication school. Wow. Yeah, so that that was amazing. It was that was like one of the biggest goals I had set for myself and reached. So you graduate yeah. TCNJ. Yeah. So so two years? no two years at, at Mercer County. Right. Transferred to TCNJ. Did it take you another two years at TCNJ or longer? Oh, longer. I was on the five year plan. Ah. <laughs> But I did it. But I did. It. I transferred into the business school eventually because that's where I initially wanted to go. Right. I knew I wanted to get into some sort of sports marketing or, or something in the business world. That was that was my plan. Okay. Um, but yeah, worked worked my butt off and, and eventually graduated. So how did you get involved with designing? Because business is not design. No, no, right. And and I had no plans to to have my own business or follow this route that I took into the menswear industry. But I started a, a job part-time at a men's clothing store in Cherry Hill, New Jersey. It, this was 12, 13 years ago. Okay. And that's where I started learning about the industry and growing a passion for it. This is 100% passion. I love every minute of it. love what I do. I love dressing up. And so I learned a lot from working there. Worked there for a couple of years. Left. Stayed connected to a buddy of mine from that store. And I did other jobs, started a marketing job at a company called Buy, which is started around in Princeton, you know, the beverage company. Sure. Yep. Yeah. And, um, and then eventually transitioned to a sales position, corporate sales. I was selling payroll. Okay. And this was about 10 years ago. At the same time, my friend from that clothing store started this suit business. Mm. Yes. So I helped him out on the side for fun for a couple of years. I learned a lot from shadowing him. From learn from shadowing other tailors in the industry and and making suits because I was doing a couple of clients here and there throughout. Right. Fast forward three years in sales, I learned so much about business and what goes on behind the scenes and sales in general to the point where I felt comfortable doing my own thing. So, so you get this this 
desire to 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 make men's clothes. Mm -hmm. um, so you start with a business partner. I guess the business partner is no longer with you. Or? No. So after three years in sales, I felt comfortable doing my own thing. So I approached him. I said, "Look, this is my passion. I would love to transition out of the corporate world and eventually run this business. How do you feel about it?" And he said, "Absolutely." He gave me half the company. Wow. Yeah, that was seven, six, six years ago. And uh, after a year, I bought him out. It's been me going forward ever since. Wow. Yeah. So now tell me a little bit about Jeffrey Scott, the designer, and mm -hmm. the type of clothes I'm, I'm assuming you're wearing your own design. No, this is Walmart. Yeah, no. <laughs> <laughs> yeah absolutely. Absolutely. So I make bespoke clothing. And bespoke is essentially the highest level you can get when it comes to fit and construction. And, and, it's, and it strictly suits pants, sport coats, ties, shirts, the formal side of things. And um, now, and, what go, what's the, uh, the detail about learning about what has to go into a, a men's suit? So, like, what, what, where did my education come from, you mean? Yeah. Like, where did, so, self-educated from, from doing my own research through, through the internet, which is a beautiful thing now, and shadowing people in the industry. Um, my former business partner, you know, I learned a lot from him. So that's it. But I never had any formal education. I didn't go to school for design or, and, or tailoring. And the type of designs that you get, where do you come up with the inspiration for your designs and what you're doing and how you create the suits? Yeah, I get a lot from magazines like GQ, The Rake, Esquire, mm -hmm. movies, um, vintage inspired stuff like i get a lot of inspiration from the 1920s wow. i'm an old soul so I, I feel like i should have been born in that era where everybody was suited up <laughs> yeah but i wasn't i'm trying to bring it back wow, however cool. yeah nature even like i'll look at how different colors play together in nature and say oh well that that would look nice if i did a jacket in that color and pants in that color to yeah. kind of mix it up you know? so have you become like an expert of of different types of colors that that go well with each other and can tell all the different, you know, the, your clients that you get can tell them, you know, one from another, what looks good on them, what doesn't look good on yeah, them. Yeah. Yeah. I'm still learning. You know, I don't know if I'm on the expert level yet, <laughs> but that's my goal. However, yeah, it, color, color theory is important. And what you want to look at is the person's skin tone, their complexion, right? There's warm, there is cool skin tone, and then some people are neutral. Um, and, and different colors work better for those different skin tones without now, getting too detailed into it. The, the type of clients that you get, um, you get professionals, mm -hmm. uh, professional athletes, you mm -hmm. get executives, you get people that are really, really tall, really, really fat, really skinny. <laughs> I mean, all walks of life. Really? All walks of life. Yeah. Yeah. And, and the most rewarding aspect of it is, is, is the feeling that they all get when they put that suit on for the first time yeah. like i've i've had clients tear up because they felt so good and, and that gives me the chills it's the best you know a lot of guys come with low level of confidence and this this changes that wow yeah that's the beauty now so but. what what's entailed in making the suit give, give us uh some information you know of what's entailed in, in, yeah. in making the yeah, suit. Yeah, the process so the rough timeline is eight to ten weeks. Okay. We're crafting this completely from scratch, by hand, down to the buttonhole. So it's a very detailed process. We do about three to five fittings over that time frame to, to really nail down the fit and the pattern so that it's a perfect fitting garment. Um, and the pattern is essentially the client's blueprint. We look at the measurements, but we also look at their posture, their shoulder slope, their, their pitch of their arms and a lot of other factors. So everybody's yeah. got some kind of everybody's deformity. Yeah, 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 right? yeah, 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 <laughs> yeah. We're all misshaped. <laughs> There's only 1% that can go to a store, buy something off the rack, and it's good. <laughs> yeah, yeah. yeah. So, so um, it's a 10-week span, and the type of people that you're working with, basically all executives or professional yeah. athletes of some sort. Uh, yeah, a lot of business owners, financial guys, attorneys, sales representatives, realtors. I do a lot of weddings, so that's a lot of fun and very special. And, and the athletes, yeah, athletes, gentlemen in, in the media, on TV, so yeah. So you get a Blessed. little bit of everybody. Yeah. And so over seven years, six, seven years of being in business, what can you tell everybody about your business and about how it all works? I don't have a physical store. 
So the way I work is I either go to my clients or they come to me at a secret club that I can't give the location <laughs> to, but it's in Princeton, I'll, I'll tell you that, and it's a very 1920s themed club, as you've seen. Yes. Yeah, absolutely. Anthony's been blessed to visit. <laughs> um, so, so that's my process, and, and we meet, we, we go through, I go through with every client what they do for a living, what their goals are with this, how often will they be wearing it, and, and then we kind of, I kind of guide them to what I think would be the best approach. And, and a lot of times they have something in mind as to what they want, but they trust my opinion, which is great. And, and now do you get, um, do you get clients that uh, come back again and mm -hmm. again and again? Yeah. Yeah. I, I think at last I checked about 50 to 60% of my business was repeat. Wow. Yeah. Yeah. That's fantastic. Yeah, so where blessed. do you where do you find clients? Is it really just word of mouth, or do you advertise? Or so in the early stages, I had to hustle for the first five years. I was out networking every week, making phone calls, knocking on doors to different businesses, and dropping off my cards, doing doing what I learned in sales, which is why I'm blessed I had that career. And I did that for five years. I built the business while I was still working my full time sales job, and then I finally got to the position where everything was coming in steady at that five year mark, it just kind of clicked. Yeah. And I was able to transition to doing the business full time. And so a lot in the early stages came from that. Some of it still does, yeah. but most of my business now is referrals, Instagram, and Google. That's it. And how do people find you? What, what's your website? What's your Instagram? Mm -hmm. How do people find you? Sure, so website is jeffreyscott.com, J-E-F-F-R-E-Y, I think you'll, Tag at the end of this, right? Sure. Um, Instagram is Jeffrey Scott Clothing, and that's, those are basically my two main sources. Check those out; you can find everything out about me. And, yeah. and I uh, looked at the Instagram. Um, it's basically you, right? Yeah, it is. Yeah, yeah. So, I'm my own model. I post my clients uh, often as well, but yeah. yeah. And it's a wide variety of different suits that you you mm -hmm. wear, and it's sometimes it's just uh, jackets and things of that sort, right? Right. Yeah. So, so it's not always just uh, suits. suits. Right. It could be wide variety of different things. Absolutely. So what, what do people come to you for? Uh, tuxedos, suits? Yeah, so for the wedding side of things, it's a mix of tuxedos and suits. I've been doing a lot of tuxedos lately, uh -huh. which is fun because that's the, the most formal of side of things, unless you're going to white tie and, and all. Um, but then I have a lot of clients, especially nowadays, because everything's so casual that we're doing sport coats and trousers and, and even chinos. So that's the, the most casual as I would get are, are a pair of khakis. Yes. Yeah. But I like doing that because like, like I'm wearing today, I don't know if you can see the lower half, but um, I've got a sport coat and pants and you can have a little more fun with it, with the colors and patterns and add some personality to it. And do you do all the accessories, ties, mm -hmm. shirts, things of that sort? Yes. Well? Ties, shirts, pocket squares. I don't do shoes. I don't do belts. So it's really custom everything. Yeah. If you want. Yeah. That's <laughs> Yeah. So we're coming to the end of our show, and I uh, usually ask my guests, uh, what advice do you want to give to uh, students and parents that are watching this, want to go to college, want to be a designer? Yeah. Um, what advice do you want to give them? Mm. Follow your passion. Find out what gets you excited and, 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 and go for it. Don't be afraid. And for the parents who are hesitant because maybe you want your kid to take a certain route to be a doctor or, or an attorney or something like that let them let them figure it out because i feel like a lot of times that can hold them back if they don't have the support from their parents which is the most important avenue of support that they need and um yeah i mean i didn't have a great educational route in the beginnings but i found my way and i found what i love and i went for it and, and that was it yeah. um yeah well yeah. thank you very much yeah for thank on. you Appreciate it. Great yeah, to no see problem. you. Yeah. Me too. So you've been watching The Secrets of College Planning. I'm your host, Anthony Uva. Until next time.